And then uh, Richard found out about Sudbury Valley, and he and he said, "This is this is what I've wanted to do my whole life." There, look, they're not using a curriculum. They don't have grades or, or a transcript, and and they're still getting kids into college. So so then, and also we were getting lots of phone calls from a lot of kids who wanted to be part of the school. So we went and uh, and we we got a building to be in, and uh, we we learned two very useful things from Sudbury. Well, three very useful things from Sudbury Valley. One was to have a school government because before that we didn't we had no way of, of making it egalitarian, and so with this with the school government we could we could do that. And the other was to have a separate committee that deals with conflicts that come up, discipline issues, and the, the, and the, the committee, you know, committee of students and a staff room. And that, those, so those were two big ideas from Sudbury Valley. The third was that the students should do the hiring and firing, which I, which I think now is one of the best things we do. It's a very good thing. So, but we made a few changes. One change is instead of voting, we use consensus process. And uh, th th I mean, there's there's advantages and disadvantages to using consensus. What I like about consensus is it fosters uh, an environment of cooperation because it's a cooperative decision-making model as opposed to a contentious decision-making model. I mean, it also has other problems. Um, and the other thing is that um, instead of using a criminal justice system, instead of finding somebody innocent or guilty and then giving them punishment, we wanted to get away from the idea of punishments. So the committee was using more restorative justice. The idea of what can we do to get the community back to functioning from the disruption. And, and you could actually talk more about the, the grievance committee. We, when we called, instead of the judicial committee, called it the, the Grievance Committee. So that was, that was 1990. And then we also made the curriculum uh, optional. And we found out very quickly that uh, nobody wanted to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> we just forgot about the, the curriculum. Um, and so, you know, we're learning and we're doing our stuff. And then in, um, in 2000, we went to IDEC. And we found out about other schools and all the things that they were doing. And, and very soon after that, we, we watched the lecture from Yaakov Hech, and we realized that there were incredible benefits that come from not using the curriculum, from letting the students follow their own passions. So that was, that was really good. Then in 2002, um, Richard died. So we've just been kind of struggling along since then. It's been 10 years since Richard passed away and we've been carrying it with the students. But it wasn't when Richard passed away, we thought, oh no, you know, what, what are we going to do without Richard? But at that point, we had four graduates lining up. And these graduates were partners. <laughs> and they picked up the school, and they did what Richard used to do, you know, cleaning, picking up, you know, um, listening to younger students, all these things they picked up. And um, and became the force to to keep the school going, and so they really saved us from from falling. Uh, usually, when the when the um, when the founder pass away or go away, it's really hard to keep the school uh, going. But because of the the help from from the older uh, students who were there for a long time um, took it on. Um, were you 
it really ha saved us to, to feel empowered that, oh, it is the you know, students, it is the kids' school. It's not just about the adults holding it, but it is by the students, that, you know, with the students we can do it. So it was very, very empowering when we returned past away. <laughs> Yeah. The idea has always been that it's a student school, that we, we work for the students. It's not our school, it's a student school. It was, it, was a, it was a difficult but significant, I think, year. Because um, he, he really did teach us what it means to have the power to uh, change your surrounding environment, the system that you're in. So there's something you don't like about the school, you know, it's not the staff's fault, it's the student's job to, to change what they don't like about the school. It's, you know, nobody's telling them that it has to be that way. You know, everybody, all the staff member is saying, if you want to change it, we're here to help you make that change. It's just, there's no room for complaints, almost, <laughs> um, because you're empowered to, to make the change that you need to make in the school. Uh, and I think one of the biggest uh, thing that keeps the school going is the, the grievance committee that we have when a student gets into trouble trouble um, or is having a difficult time um, goes against the agreements that the students have formed then they hold a grievance committee and it's student center so the students run the committee and uh, they invite you know, other students, anybody can join to resolve the conflict that's taking place in the school. So there's no punishment for, um, for the students there. So it's a very cooperative kind of communal uh, way of doing education than a lot of the schools that we see, I guess, I guess around. I have a next question. Uh, what what you are doing in the school? What's uh, what what is your timetable for like an example? So what is tomorrow in the school you can online or at eight? What you are doing? Mm, for the students? For, for the students, yeah. I mean, I can, I can talk about what it was like 10 years ago because I graduated 10 years ago. So I can tell you what it was like then and then maybe they can fill you in on what it's like now. You know, the differences and similarities. When I was there, um, there was no curriculum. So, for example, a day would start with me going into the kitchen and we all make tea and sit around <laughs> and talk about our family or what happened the night before or some of the troubles that we're going through um, in our kind of social groups. Um, and then maybe, you know, we'll go to another room <laughs> and go and sit down with other students. And, uh, and then maybe, you know, depending on the student, um, you know, some students might be taking a class at a community college, um, kind of a pre-college uh, system. And they might go to a class, you know, outside of school because we don't, uh, we have a, what is it called? Um, you can leave the school whenever you like. Uh, open, open campus. We have an open campus policy. So you just sign in and sign out. So you don't have to be at the school from 9 to 9 to 5. Um, so, yeah, some people might go to a community college. Other kids might go to the computer room to go play games. You know, other people might go to the art room to go play with the clay. Um, so some other people might just, you know, go take off and go to the mountains and go hiking. A lot of people might just sit around <laughs> and, and do, do absolutely nothing, uh, it seems like, you know. But I think that's the best, the, the, what happens the most is when people are not doing anything. Because when you, especially for the first um, two years when a, when a student comes into the school because they're so trained to have to be on top of all of these things. You know, every hour is scheduled for you in schools and they tell you what to do every hour, every minute of the day, when you're allowed to have lunch, when you're allowed to take breaks, that it's harder for students when they first come not to do anything. Um, 
So I think people struggle with it a little bit and they're like, oh, I have to take English classes, I have to take math classes. But then they start to realize that it's okay, that it's okay to sit and process. It's okay to sit and enjoy yourself, enjoy your company, enjoy your friends, you know, enjoy your, your environment, your surrounding, um, which really makes you whole as a human being. And I think that's what the school tries to foster, is to create these whole human beings that isn't just up here or that isn't just here, but you know, all connected at the same time. And that process can only come if you have the time to relax, if you have the time to decompose and, um, and enjoy your peers. And you know, that makes you a better human being. So, that, that's usually what happens and then people don't want to leave the school so they usually stay until you know five or six o'clock until the staff members say okay guys you have to go now you have to you have to leave um, and then you know we all take off and the same thing happens happens the next day so that's that's basically the day. we call that the decompression time and I guess it's the structures in our brains that decompose during the time after 10 years, it hasn't changed. <laughs> what she said is exactly what's happening now. People come in in the morning, whether it's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, they come in and they come into the kitchen. We're in the kitchen. We say, good morning. They say, hey. And they, they're off to wherever they need to be off to. They come in and make tea or eat lunch and you know at 10 o'clock <laughs> or something like that and so the kitchen is the pathway and then they go into other places and, and do whatever they need to be doing in that in that time so every day is different yeah as an uh, interview with a student from German school in the south of Germany, this is called Capriola. And uh, this uh, boy talked uh, sim similar things what he's doing over the day. Mm -hmm. And then he talked uh, that he come to uh, an exam. must go to another school, to a state, state school, and there's an exam. And he thought, I'm very well. So uh, I think it's not the problem of the children, but it's the problem of the parent. Do you worry she, she will not yeah. learn enough, or are you hard enough to, uh, yeah. to yeah. make that worry? We, do, we, definitely, we definitely always need to work more with the parents than we're working. It's, it's, uh, well, that's I'm talking about problems. That's an ongoing problem. We need to work with the parents more. And then, like, like she said, not doing anything. They, they adapt. First, they, they, they take in this, this um, idea that if they're not in front of the, the uh, desk doing some work, then they're not doing anything. And so when they're, when they first come in. When they first come in and sit on the couch and start relating to other kids, not doing anything, they feel kind of funny, you know, not doing anything. And, and they feel like uh, they need to prove themselves that they can do something or they, they struggle with that not doing anything. And so is the parents. The parents see them on the on the couch. What did you do today? <laughs> <laughs> and then they get very nervous. And you know, like, but we, we see it as a journey through themselves. And the journey is always dark because you can't really see what what's next. And so they go through this journey and. And what we do because the time frame is different for every student so some some people take longer some people take shorter some people get through this two years without it being two years it might just be a half a year um, although that's pretty rare I'm sure but you know some people might take three four years and for parents to wait three four years until their 
their their children are inspired to to get up and you know and do something you know as they see it um, I think it's very scary for them so it's really sad often to see our fellow students being pulled out um, right in kind of the middle of this process but um, but they always come through and that's the kind of the truth in, in it all no matter how long it takes um, they'll always get up and most of them will end up you know finding whatever passion they, they find whether that's academia or you know uh, working or you know handcrafts or whatever it is they always find their path in doing it and when they do it only takes them you know a little bit to catch up on math or English or they don't it's you know you can I caught up on on all of the math and English and everything else that I didn't do for two two years in about a year it took me a year to cover all of the academic bases in order for me to go to college so it's actually it doesn't take much at all once you're motivated to, to do those things but it's I think really difficult for parents um, to probably understand that. <laughs> Actually, I've calculated that for every year that you don't do the standard curriculum, it's two months to catch up. Oh, really? Yeah, I've made that Whoa. calculation. Oh, wow. That's why for you, four <laughs> years of, of no academics translated to one year of community college. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Well, we just want kids to be happy. <laughs> you know, happy with themselves, whatever they do. The minute you know, you sit, sit with people, and and if they can be happy pe person, then you're contributing to the world, and that's that's what we really want to see is is be accepting of who you are and find that um, trust in yourself, like we trust them. So when when you see when after they graduate when you see when you see them when they come to school when you see them with big arms going like this and say ah oh, iku or oh mo and being all happy to see us it really is a lot of joy you know they give us a lot of joy seeing them being happy so that's 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 what we we. Uh, try for to see the kids be happy. <laughs>